and gross darkness the people. He said, but the Lord shall arise upon you and the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon you. The darkness that covers the earth in our day is the reason for God arising to shine upon us. Hallelujah. So, the scripture now says in um, the book of um, Job, is that Job? Chapter 22. Are you there? Job. Chapter 22. Look at verse 29. When men are cast down, Huh. Mark the word when. So it is certain that in our day, men will be what? Will be cast down. When men are cast down, don't keep quiet. Don't join the chorus. That must not be your experience. You also should not be cast down. When men are cast down, then Thou shalt say, there is a lifting up. Hallelujah. Amen. As we look all around us, we can see men being cast down. Cast down in affliction. Cast down in sin. Cast down under oppression. Cast down in compromise. Cast down in debts. Cast down in poverty. Cast down in hunger. Cast down by troubles. So the scripture says, when men are cast down, it is the time for you to declare what your portion is. What is your portion? There is a lifting up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a lifting up. 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 Oh my God. When the flood came, because of man's disobedience, there was a casting down. Is that right? The flood that buried men was the flood that lifted the ark. You are not following me. Huh? The same waters God let loose the waters from the net and the waters from above. The waters that cast men down, buried men, closed men's chapter, was also the waters that lifted those that were in the ark. Those who were in the ark were above what destroy others. Are you following me? Those who were in the ark we are both. What buried others? They are on top of it. Those of us that will consciously obey God in this day, what will sink others will soar us, Amen. will lift us, Amen. will distinguish us, Amen. will raise us. What will finish others who raise us? Hallelujah. So when they say there is a casting down, 
Don't be quiet. Say what? There is a lifting up. So I believe that this retreat will bring a lifting to you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Because you see, it is in tough times like this that God proves himself on behalf of his people. And that is the testimony of Genesis chapter 26 where we shall be dwelling in this retreat. Are you there? Genesis 26. Agaba idwe Agaba idwe Agaba idwe Agaba Agaba idwe Agaba idwe Agaba idwe Agaba idu Agaba idu Agaba Follow me to Genesis 26 Look at verse 1 And there was a famine in the land Can I say to you, beloved, farming is not strange. Was there farming in the days of Abraham? Yes. What of Isaac? Yes. What of Jacob? Yes. What of Joseph? Yes. What of Yonde? <laughs> so it's not Buhari or Tinibu that is responsible. It has always been there. There was famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gera. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. So John in this land, and I will be with thee and will bless thee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I'll make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. And will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice. You will obey his voice. Yeah. That amen can be better. Yeah. You will obey his voice. Yeah. You will obey his voice. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. And Isaac dwelt in Gera. And the man of the place asked him of his wife, and he said, she's my sister. How he feared to say, she's my wife. Let said he, the man of the place should kill me for Rebecca, because she was fair to look upon. And it came to pass, when he had been there 
a long time that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out at a window and saw. And behold, Isaac was plotting with Rebekah, his wife. And Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, of a shorty, she is thy wife. And how sayest thou, she is my sister? And Isaac said unto him, Because I said, Lest I die for her. Abimelech said, What is this that thou hast done unto us? One of the people might lightly have lain with thy wife, and thou should have brought guiltiness upon us. And Abimelech charged his people, saying, He that touched this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Then Isaac sold in that land hmm. and received the next year. Huh? You are not following. Huh? Next year. Huh? Same year. What did he receive? Same year. One hundred food. Wow. Glory be to God. And the man was great and went forward and grew until he became very great for he had possession of flocks and possession of hearts and great store of servants and the Philistines envied him. Look at verse 15. I, I feel we are not going to touch 15 tonight. For all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham his father, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. Now, I like to bring a few lessons to us and we'll pray with those lessons tonight. Number one, there was farming in the land. Farming is not strange. And permit me to say that farming is not a challenge. You didn't hear me. Huh? Farming is not a challenge. With our God, farming is not a challenge. It's only an opportunity for our God to prove himself as the one that is in charge. Our God can overrule in every circumstances of life. How do you call farming a challenge? When in the year of farming, somebody is having 100 fold harvest. You're not hearing me. Eh? How do you call farming a challenge? When in the year of farming, Others, plants, nothing grows. But somebody else, under the government of heaven, the same place where others are planting and they are getting nothing, he is planting and he is having 100-fold. Help me tell your neighbor, farming is not a challenge. Say it well. It's not a challenge. So the moment farming came, Isaac did what anybody will do. He started looking for a way out. Kai. I can say it a thousand times. Life is not a product of where you are. 
Life is the product of where God asks you to be. Period. Where you want to be and where God wants you to be are far apart. So the moment famine came, Isaac went to the king, uh, to King Abimelech, to Gera. And ladies and gentlemen, it was when he journeyed from the promised land to Gera that the Philistines took over the promised land and blocked all the wells. Are you there? Are you following me? Uh, I wish there is a way. Now, listen. This is Canaan. This is promised land. This is where Isaac was. These are wells. Wells. The moment famine came, he moved out together. And as he moved out together, the Philistines took over the land of promise. And the first thing they began to do was to do what? Was to stop the wells. Every well in your life that has been stopped will be unstopped in this meeting. So, Isaac's destination was not just Gera, he was going to go beyond Gera to Egypt. And every journey a man takes away from the place of his calling, every journey a man takes from the place of his destiny, every journey a man takes away from the will of God will bring you down. Life can never be better away from God's will. Are you there? He went together. He was going to proceed to Egypt. God knows what the consequence is. Abraham went down to Egypt. That's how he came back with Hagar. And the whole world is suffering because of that mistake. The whole world, till today, is suffering. Islam is a product of that failure. He's going down. So when he got together, God had to intercept him not to go to Egypt. And God said, no, 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 no. You don't need to change location because of famine. I can bless you in spite of famine. Sir, when it becomes hard, Satan wants you to relocate. But relocation can dislocate you. God can bless a man anywhere. So God intercepted Isaac and said to him, Isaac, don't go anywhere. Remain here now where I've captured you. I am going to bless you here. Excuse me, beloved. It looks as if it was not an easy exercise when God got him in Gera to push him back to the promised land. So God said, okay, I can manage you here. But I can still make your story different here in the midst of the people that you are. Are you following me? Then God gave him fantastic promise of blessing during famine.
Hmm. Can I say to somebody? It looks tough. It looks hard. It looks difficult. But this year, 2024, you will do what you have never done all your life. You will touch what you have never touched. You will spend what you have never spent. You will enjoy what you have never enjoyed. Even in farming, God will prove himself in your life. Hallelujah. Look at the kind of promises that God was giving him. I will be with you. Then who can be against you? And we bless thee. I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give unto thy seed all these countries. Can you imagine a time of famine and God is talking of multiplying his children like the stars of heaven? <laughs> that is why if you are talking of having few children just because of hunger or how to take care of them, I don't agree with you. Mm. If you can't make ten like two, go halfway, five. That's five. <laughs> like me. Amen. When was God promising to multiply his children like the stars? Huh? Huh? Why are you regarding what God is disregarding? Why is it that what is not God's concern is your concern? And God said, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed through his seed. When? Huh? In the year of famine. Hmm. Then listen. Every time God engages with a man, the first test that comes your way is your home. I beg you, don't take your home lightly. Because if Satan has won in your home, you cannot win elsewhere. Did you see it there? Huh? The moment God says, I'll bless you, 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 I'll bless you. I'll multiply you. And Isaac said, okay, Lord, I agree. I'm not going to Egypt again. And he dwelt in Gera. What was the next thing? Mark the word and. That's conjunction. And the man of the place asked him of his wife. The next test that came was about his home. 
I don't know whether you are getting the picture. The man just said, okay, God, you say I shouldn't go to Egypt, I'll not go again. I, I have settled down. I'll stay here. Then it looks as if hell said, let's check him up. Whether what God wants to do with him can succeed. And the first checkup is the home. Excuse me, sir. That is the pattern anywhere. Let me give you an example. How many of you remember Moses? Huh? God appeared to Moses after the burning bush. And God told him, I'm going to send you to Egypt to deliver my people. God commissioned him to go to Egypt to deliver his people. And Moses started the journey. Him, the wife, and two sons. What was the first temptation that came his way? The home. How do I know? He had, sit down, he had a donkey. A family of four. Himself, the wife, two children. And the donkey can't take the four of them. God could provide two donkeys. But God provided one to be sure he passes the family test before heaven can be more committed to him. You need to understand that the home is before ministry. Are you there? Are you following me? And he passed the exam. He took his wife, he put her on the donkey. He brought his son, he put him on the donkey. He brought the other son, put him on the donkey. And he, the man, was trekking. So when he decided to trek, God said, this is a good man. God came and held his hand. And God was trekking with him, and they were chatting and discussing on the way to Egypt. Hallelujah. So every time a man is resolved to settle in the things of God, in the purpose of God, the first test that comes is on the family life. Charity begins at home. Are you following me? So Isaac the moment he settled down in Gera his own trial came they saw him with the wife and then they asked okay this lady we see you with all the time. Who is she? Ladies and gentlemen, man of God, what should be the answer? You are not talking to me. Tell him not to worry tomorrow. Huh? Huh? You see? Most times, we tell lies. Uh, most times, it is when we want to tell lies that we talk too much. <laughs> huh? What is the answer? Excuse me, brother. Hello, ma. Come. Come. Madam, come. Now look at this situation. Eh? Every time they see uh, Isaac, they see her following. And she's a very pretty woman. And then somebody said, Who is this woman? She's my sister. <laughs> Yeah. 
Listen. When we go on, one of the wells the Philistines have stopped is the well of truth. How many of you know truth has become scarce? We lie in disguise. Somebody will say, when Abraham said, Sarah is my sister, actually, she is his sister. They have the same father, though not the same mother, but they are the same father. So it's right. But the sense in which he said it is a lie. Are you following me? So Isaac turned and answered them and said, oh, That lady, oh, she's my sister. Because he had calculated in his heart if he says she's my wife, they may kill him and take her. And he is not ready to die for her like his father was not ready to die for his mother. So his marriage was a. A, a what? A repetition. May you not treat your mother the way your father. May you not treat your wife the way your father treated your mother. Some of you are here today, the difficulty and the problem you are having in your marriage is the fact that you are a replica of your father. That thing that made this marriage fail is in your blood. Please think about it. I don't think there was a day Abraham called Isaac and said, you see, any day you go anywhere and they ask you about your wife, tell them that she's your sister. Don't die for that woman. Yeah? Don't die for her. Was there any day like that? No. Huh? But did he do exactly what the father did? That's a prayer to pray. Oh God, Anything that was wrong with my father's marriage that wants to be wrong with me, deliver me. Let his story not be my story. Let his experience not be my experience. Let my own story be different. Can I hear a good amen? Amen. Because you see, if you get it right, maritally, you can get it right ministerially. You can get it right otherwise. Amen. Have you followed me to this point? He said, because uh, I, I don't want them to kill me. But there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. What happened that day was funny. They did all their shopping up and down. And they didn't know there was heat before they went out. So they rolled all the curtains up so that fresh air can come in. And the moment they were returning from where they returned to, ah, he wanted to kiss the wife or something. And he didn't know the king was watching from the palace. I said, Kai, the way this man is doing with this woman, no be brother and sister be this. <laughs> this one pass, brother and sister. Hallelujah. So the king now drew his attention. 
I didn't say yes, it's fear. But perfect love casted out fear. Then look at that verse 12. I hope you are noting the prayer issues. Look at that verse 12. Then, after Isaac settled there, God corrected his marital deficiency. Then, he sowed in that land and received. He sowed and received. He sowed and received. He sowed and received. In the same year, a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. So what is the secret of hundredfold harvest in a year of famine? What is the secret? The Lord blessed him. If you sow and the Lord doesn't bless you. Other people sowed. But their testimony was testimony of family kind. This year is a tough year. It's a difficult year. Kai. This year really, farming really dealt with me. I planted one, 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 one bag of beans. And look at, look at, look at. It was just one bucket. Just one bucket. That was the testimony of others. But that same year, the men were giving such testimony. God brought blessing on his effort. And what should not ordinarily give tenfold, give one hundredfold. Please, can we read that verse 12 in all the versions we have? Yes. Mm. Huh. The Lord will favor you with blessings. In this year of famine, the Lord will favor you with blessings. The Lord will favor you with blessings. Your sowing will attract hundred times harvest. In the name of Jesus. Hundredfold, hundred times, hundred times. Excuse me. It is note. It is worthy of note that Isaac didn't sit down and fold his legs, complaining and mourning about farming. You know, many times that's what we do. You are talking instead of sowing. You are complaining instead of sowing. God do not bless your complaining. God will not bless your talking, but God will bless your sowing. Rain has started. So, don't finish eating that granite. Keep some meat cups for sowing. God is looking for something that you are doing that he will bless. God blessed him only because he sold. Hallelujah. Amen. I encourage every one of us, it is part of the covenant package. Farm and keep animals. You didn't hear me? Yes, sir. Farm and do what? Keep animals. Amen. 
If you don't want it, farm for me. You hear? When the harvest comes, bring it for me. I know what to do with it. Don't be lazy. Don't be grumbling. Don't be complaining. Do something that God can multiply. It was because he saw that God multiplied 100 times. Excuse me, oh, zero times 100. But do you know, even one times 100 will give you what? 100. So your little effort of sowing puts you ahead of idle people. You didn't hear me. Huh? Your little effort of doing something and giving God opportunity to bless you puts you ahead of those who are doing nothing because when God blesses they are nothing, it will equal nothing. I went to Chad. They carry female goat, dash me. What a good pepper soup. You like to eat too quick. No wonder. You don't differentiate between seed and bread. God gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. It's not everything that comes to you that is bread. You are in a hurry for pepper soup. I was not. I tamed my appetite and told myself, don't worry about the pepper soup now. So I took the goat and I gave a uh, Edna Sosman, please, my in law, help me take care of my goat. I'm not sure last year I even remembered I had goat. But this year I now remember. So, uh, in law, how far with my goat? <laughs> no, if I put my team with you, I'm not that careless. I remember. I remember. So I said, you know, how far with my goat? He said, Daddy, your goats are now six in two years. If I ate it two years ago, I would have gone to the toilet and then it's forgotten. Are you following me? You know, several of our fathers, they prospered, they were blessed, but they only gave us half of their story. They only told us they were sowing money, they were sowing money, and God blessed them. Mm, it's part of it, but it's not all of it. They were doing something that was bringing the money. Some of them have shares. Some of them have estates. Some of them bought landed properties. So many things that they sold. Uh, what's his name? Uh, King's uh, International Christian Center. As Matthew Asimolo is telling us now. When land was very cheap in Lagos, he bought them few thousands, hectares. Now he's selling one, many, many millions. But when he was buying it, he didn't tell us. Are you there? Yeah. 
Oh, yeah? For me, oh, God don't carry me the go. I'm doing something. I'm giving him opportunity to do what? To bless me. So when we came to church this year, first day, they brought me a ram. I said, oh, I took my ram. I know I love ram meat, sheep meat very well. It was a serious temptation, but I overcame. They asked me, what do we do with this ram? I said, leave it there. So the last day of Caliban's child, they told me I didn't see that one again. They brought me another goat. So I reminded uh, my in-law, seven goats now and one ram. And he promised me by November, you sell some of my goats and buy a cow. Wow. You yeah, are welcome. Are you following me? Yes, sir. What of you? They never dash you chicken before. What do you carry and do? Many, 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 many years ago, we went to Cameroon and we went to the canoes. I went to a canoe man. How many of you know of the canoe tribe? The canoe tribe is in uh, Borno State. They are ardent Islamic people. They have their, they, they have their marks like this. As I do this, I learned that all over the world, they don't have up to five canaries as Christians. So when I came to the man to share the gospel, he was doing shy, you know shy? This is their local tea. Inside his big, small drum on fire. He gave me seat, I sat down. He gave me shy because they take a lot of shy because of the hot weather. They take it with a lot of sugar. So he gave me the shy, the lot of sugar. I took it. He was so happy. This is a good lesson to learn. If men will receive your gospel, receive what they offer you. That was a day. Okay, I'll finish telling you the story. So, when I finished drinking shy, I preached Jesus to him. At the end of the preaching, he was so happy. He gathered his family. They listened to me. I led them. They prayed the sinner's prayer. They gave their lives to Jesus. He was so happy. When I was about to go, he went and caught a hen and gave me. So I took the hen. I went to the brother we were staying with and I said, please help me take care of it. By the time we came back the next year, the hen has hatched so much that he sold and bought a goat. And the goat was producing, and they were bringing us goat from my goat for Kelebais Marwa for several years from the chicken. But there is a sad part of the story I need to tell you so that you can learn. The next year we came back, and we came back with our boss. The boss was full of pure water. And I came with several other ministers, including Pastor Naji. And uh, 
I think Pastor Abi was on that trip too, and others. And I took them to go and see the canary convert. So when we came, we were so excited. The water he had was red water. Excitedly, like he gave me shy, he gave us the red water. And without thinking, all of us rejected his water. Actually, we had just taken water. We had plenty pure water. We were all just taking water. But we we're not taking missions. The countenance of the man changed. I didn't quickly pick what happened. We sat down with him. He sat down. He didn't go to call his family. Pastor Naji preached a very powerful Holy Ghost sermon. He didn't hear anything. And when he asked, will you give your life to Jesus? He said no. <laughs> it was a hard lesson for us to learn. He rejected our gospel. Why? Rejected. We rejected his water. But I was trying to let you know that give God opportunity to do what? To bless you. And how do you give him that opportunity? Whatsoever thy hand find it, your hand should find something to do. Get small land, plant maize. If the army is too late, plant granite. Of course, you know I love eating granite. I have a crusade in Onicha. The person was uh, sent me a text and said, "Can I know your menu? What will you eat?" I said, "Okay, rice, uh, my my uh, wheat," and then uh, I just stopped there. He said, uh, and. Uh, like I know, I will get your granite ready. <laughs> so whatever you eat with the granite, let me know. <laughs> Glory be to God. Are you following me? Somebody else, read that verse 12 for us before we pray. I mean, you lead us to pray. Yeah? Huh? Isaac planted fields in that place. In that place. And that year. And that year. He great harvest. He got. What will happen to you this year? I will gather a great harvest. The Lord bless him very much. What will God do for you this year? No matter the famine, no matter the hardship, no matter the dryness, no matter the difficulty everywhere, God's blessing is going to make a distinction in your life. Because he's going to, what you do, will give him opportunity to do what? To bless you. And you see, we don't belong to the family of people who are just seeking to be blessed. We belong to the family of people who are seeking to become a blessing. Hallelujah. Jesus. So we're not just farming to have food to eat. We are farming to have enough food to give out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, any other version? Isaac planted crops in the land. They did, they grew very well. Listen to me, this year, whatever you plant will grow very well. Will grow very well. Will grow very well. In the name of Jesus. Yes.
because the Lord is going to bless you. What you when you put small hundred times, Amen. one thousand times. Amen. I think our responsibility is greater than Isaac's own. What do you think? Yes. Amen. Any other version? What name is God giving this year for you? Blessings. Huh? Blessings. A tremendous year. A tremendous year. A tremendous year. Any other version? The Lord will bless you very much. Amen. This same year. Glory be to God. This same year that is called the year of famine. Have you heard people say something like this? Kai, since I was born, I've never seen it like this. This year. That of this year. It's too bad though. It's too much. Oh. The suffering is too much. All they are saying is a fact. All they are saying is a fact, but not the truth. Amen. Verse 13. That's God's promise for the year. Verse 13. gathered more and more wealth until he became very rich man. Huh? Isaac became rich. Who, who became rich? Moses became rich. Huh? Who? Moses. Say it well. Moses. Say it confidently. Moses became rich. Huh? How many of you know it is not money that is the root of all evil? Love money. Huh? Can I see your hand? This hand of yours shall no more be empty. Amen. These hands shall no more be empty. Amen. Whatever these hands we touch, we multiply. Amen. We produce. Amen. We bring a harvest. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And Isaac became rich. And God blessed him so much that he became very rich. My God, which year did he become very rich? Somebody will become very rich this year. Amen. That person's amen is the loudest. He didn't become rich by stealing. He became rich by sowing. Yes. He gathered more and more wealth mm -hmm. until he became a very rich man. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. He, he had many flocks uh -huh. and herds uh -huh. of animals. He also had many slaves. All the Philistines were jealous of him. This year, those who hate you will jealous you. Amen. Amen. 
you shall become the envy of your family. Amen. Those who insulted you will look up to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God multiplied him. He had flocks. What does it cost you to buy a chicken? One thousand to drop. If you don't have, come and meet me, I'll give you. If you don't have. Buy chicken. You don't need to buy feeds. The crumbs for your table, they will eat. I was climbing upstairs this afternoon, and one of my chicken was just, I said, what is this one doing here? And then somebody said, it's laying egg. I said, that's a good one. <laughs> Say, I will do something. Say, I will do something. Say, I will do something. You know, some of us have taken a permanent seat of I don't have. Kelba is coming, bringing something. What do I have? What do I have that I will bring? What do I have? Do I... Well, you can keep chicken, they will multiply. This year, you can bring chicken. Next year, you can qualify to bring goat. Because God, you see, it is also in your progressive sowing that you are elevated. Yes. Glory be to God. Admin, let's pray. We have not entered the matter because I also didn't want those who went for the crusade to miss out. Amen. So tomorrow, we'll now begin to look at the matter of the wealth.